Today, not only is the editor still alive, but he has become the director's key collaborator. No other crew member spends as much time working alone with the director. Finding the relationship with the editor is like trying to decide whether or not to get married. Because if the marriage isn't a good one, it's going to be a sticky divorce. When I was doing my first movie, the only thing I knew is I wanted a female editor. Because I just felt a female editor would be more nurturing to the movie and to me. I wouldn't try to be winning their way just to win their way, all right? They wouldn't be trying to shove their agenda or win their battles with me. They would be I'm nurturing sorry. me through this process. I me, kill me, man! I didn't fucking got that! I think editors play a big role with directors in giving them support, making them feel like they can, they can look at something that may have trouble or problems and be comfortable enough so that they can approach those problems. Hi, Vincent. I'm getting dressed. In the beginning, he really doesn't guide me. And then I put together what I think he wants. And pretty much, we've worked together so long, I can judge what he would want. The fuck is this place? This is Jack Rabbit Slims. An Elvis man should love it. Come on, man, let's go get a steak. You can get a steak here, Daddy-o. Don't be a... Oh, after you, kitty cat. Initially, I had it, like, really long. It was, it was like a date in real time, all right? And it was sort of like Sally's job to kind of, like, you know, little by little convince me to bring it down and bring it down and bring it down, and it's, it still could be funny. You would still have what I'm talking about, but maybe it wouldn't be so painful. He did want it to feel very much like a date, and it was very long at first, and we just had to kind of live with it for a while. <laughs> just like, you know, letting me live with it long enough so I could eventually, okay, I've had it enough, I've seen that enough, okay, maybe now I can lose this part. Okay, so well, now it's, it was like here, and now it's like here. Finally, we'd bring it down and bring it down, and then I kind of brought it too far down, and then he said, we got to bring it back out. That's it. No more, no more, no more, no more. This, you know, this is not a video. We do that for eight months, so intense. I see him more than my husband. And sometimes I, you know, get annoyed with her for not reading my mind 100%, I mean. All right, you know, it's not good enough that she reads it 80% of the time, all right? <gasps> we work very intensely together, and it's kind of amazing that we still like each other. If I was with my husband that long, I don't think I'd like him that much. So <laughs> By the time I've thought of an idea, written it, found the financing, cast the film, directed it, I get to the cutting room and it's like I've washed up on shore. Because I'm so happy to be there. Because then I think, now we can start making the film. It's so hard to be a director. And uh, it's hard on the set. By the time they come into the cutting room the first week, they're usually half the people they were when they started out. You know, they're shells of the people they were. And uh, at least in my cutting room, I try to make it very easygoing and, uh, and try to heal them back into shape so that they can get to work on the movie. When uh, Matthew Broderick is busted from having thrown the election in election, uh, he enters the principal's office and sees right. all the people gathered there who know he's guilty. Mr. McAllister, I hope you can help us clear something up. He wanted to cut it like the, the end sequence of the good and the bad and the ugly with holding on the faces for a really long time with the swelling music. <laughs> I was like, no, let's, let's cut it really fast and build to a climax. And I didn't want to do that. I thought it was cheesy and would call too much attention to itself. And he just wouldn't, he just wouldn't want to do it. He wouldn't want to put it in the movie like that. So finally I said, I'll pay you $25. And I said, no, let's not do that. I go, okay, 50. And I said, no. He's like, no. <laughs> and I said, 75. So 
he even gave me an invoice, and it says I owe <laughs> that I owe him seventy-five dollars. So I paid him seventy-five dollars to cut it in, and uh, that's how it is now. <laughs> I think successful editors are really sly politicians.